robots, or at least robotic computerized voices, took over the Colorado Senate for a day in March 2019. Here's what it sounded like. And yes, this really happened. Hi, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and welcome to another edition of Strange Politics. Today we are exploring one of the very strangest incidents to take place in a U.S. state legislature for many years. And, considering how odd things can get in most U.S. state legislatures, that's saying something. But before we get started, please take a moment to like this video, and subscribe and hit the bell as well so you don't miss any of my videos in future. That is, unless you are a robot. Now, on with our story. On March 11, 2019, Senator John Cook, a Republican from Greeley, Colorado, had a problem. There were some bills being considered by the legislature that he didn't like. Some would create more regulation for the oil and gas industries, and one bill would repeal the death penalty in Colorado. Cook is a big supporter of Colorado's oil and gas industries, and as the former sheriff of Weld County, Colorado, describes the death penalty as a useful tool for discouraging crime. Cook wanted to delay these bills getting through the committee stage, but that was going to be difficult for him to do. His party, the Republican Party, lost its majority in the Colorado Senate a few months earlier in the 2018 elections. Before this, the Republicans controlled a majority of the seats in the state Senate, which meant they could control the agenda, decide when committee meetings were held, and make sure that only the bills they really liked got passed into law. But now, as the minority party in the Senate, the Republicans couldn't control much of anything. Instead, if they wanted something, the only thing they could do was to ask the Democrats really nicely. This is what Senator Cook did at first. He asked the Democratic leaders in the Senate to, pretty please, delay the committee meetings he wanted delayed. But since the Colorado Democrats wanted those bills to become law, especially the one ending the death penalty, they said no, sorry, not sorry. But was Senator Cook going to give up? Heck no. Instead of going along with what the Democratic Senate leaders wanted, he did something very unusual, something the Democrats didn't expect. He read the Colorado Constitution. Just like the United States as a whole, which has a constitution which famously begins, we the people, the state of Colorado has its very own constitution which, not so famously, begins, we the people of Colorado. After the opening few lines, though, the Colorado Constitution is pretty different from the U.S. Constitution and goes into a lot more detail about how exactly government stuff must be done. Article 5, Section 22, even specifies exactly how bills must be introduced into the Colorado Senate or the Colorado House of Representatives. It says, every bill shall be read at length, as in the whole bill has to be read out loud in full. But then it goes on to say, However, any reading at length may be dispensed with upon unanimous consent of the members present. What this passage means is, unless everyone agrees not to, every new bill to be debated by the Colorado House or Senate is supposed to be read out loud in full so that everyone can hear it before they vote on it. Reading legislation can be very time consuming though, and is almost always pretty boring. In most legislatures, where reading bills is the rule, someone almost always moves that the reading be dispensed with. Consent to dispense with the reading. And almost always, no one objects. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. After all, who wants to spend hours listening to a long, long, boring document? The rules of the Colorado Senate make it even easier to get off the hook when it comes to reading bills at length. They say that unanimous consent to dispense with the reading of every bill is presumed, which means it is automatically assumed that everyone agrees to this for every bill, unless a senator specifically requests that a bill be read at length out loud. To save time and avoid hours of boredom, requesting a bill to be read out loud at length practically never happens, which is why the Democrats in the Colorado Senate were totally unprepared in March 2019 when that wily Republican Senator Cook said, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I also move House Bill 1172 and ask that it be read at length. The person presiding over the Colorado Senate at that particular moment was Robert Rodriguez. No, 
not the famous Hollywood movie director, but the somewhat less famous Colorado senator from Denver. Someone asking for a bill to be read at length was so uncommon, he at first didn't notice. Is there any, any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion on is, oh, oh, sorry. Until the guy sat next to him said, We have to the court has to read the And then he said, So can I go take a nap? And then the guy said, and so everyone settled down to listen to the official Senate reader read the bill. House Bill 1172 by Representative Weissman and Senators Gardner and Cook. Concerning an organizational recodification of Title 12 of the Colorado Rise Statutes and in connection therewith, limiting substantive changes to those that conform to similar provisions to achieve uniformity, eliminate redundancy, or allow for the consolidation. And pretty soon, it became pretty clear to the Democrats that they had a really serious problem. The bill which Senator Cook had requested be read in full was named H.R. 19-1172. And let's just say it was a tad on the long side, and when it came to excitement, pace, and plot, it was hardly a page-turner. In fact, H.R. 19-1172 was over 2,000 pages long, and what's more, those pages were full of pretty much meaningless text, at least meaningless to anyone listening to it being read out loud from beginning to end. This bill was what is known as a cleanup bill, it contained thousands of small corrections to a very long set of laws known as Title 12. Just to give you an idea of how difficult a document to read this was, here is its full title. HB 19, 1172, Title 12, Recodification and Reorganization. Concerning an organizational recodification of Title 12 of the Colorado Revised Statutes and, in connection therewith, limiting substantive changes to those that conform similar provisions to achieve uniformity, eliminate redundancy, or allow for the consolidation of common provisions or that eliminate provisions that are archaic or obsolete. Whew. And that's just the title. Here's what the document the Senate reader had to read from actually looked like. And here's what it sounded like when the Senate reader started reading it out loud, which, being a very good sport, he did try to do without any complaining. Division of Real Estate, the Division of Conservation, the Division of Professions and Occupation, DPO, with DOR, relocating into Title 12, current statutes in Article 34, the Title 24, relating into the creation, powers, and duties of DPO. And so far, Senator Cook's plan was working a treat, and there is one particular reason why this plan was so epically genius. Colorado Senate rules prevented any other Senate work from being done during the reading of the bill. This is because, and I have to warn you, this gets a bit technical, this was a second reading of the bill, and bills in most English-speaking legislatures tend to have three readings before they can be passed. And this second reading took place during a phase of the session known as General Orders of the Committee of the Whole. That part about general orders is important because according to Colorado Senate rules, no other business shall be in order until the general orders have been disposed of. This meant the committee meetings that Senator Cook wanted delayed could not happen until the 2,000 pages of gobbledygook, which made up HB 191172, had been read out loud in full. And how long would this take? An estimated 60 hours. That's two and a half days of reading 24-7, or more likely, seven and a half days of reading eight hours per day. This, of course, made Senator Cook very happy. For a moment, it appeared that he got exactly what he wanted and that those committee meetings could not happen for a long time. But did the Democrats give up? Heck no. Actually, for a few hours, it did appear that the Democrats had given up as nothing at all happened while the poor Senate reader struggled to read the bill. He had to take a break after 45 minutes and then began taking shifts with a Senate calendar clerk. But if anything, the reading was getting slower over time as everyone got tired. And while this was happening, Senator Rodriguez spent a lot of quality time with his phone. But then, nearly three hours into the reading, a cunning plan was put into place. Five laptops were set up on the reader's desk and in the well of the Senate. And at an agreed stopping point, a computerized voice on each laptop took over the reading of the bill, all reading different sections of the bill, all simultaneously and at top speed to adjudicate the conduct or acts on which the letter was based. As you can hear, the noise this created is pretty annoying, but it was fast, 
between 625 and 650 words per minute per computer. That made the actual top reading speed 3,250 words per minute, over 20 times faster than normal human speech. It could be argued that there was a downside to the robotic voices taking over. It went from being extremely difficult to understand when the human reader was reading to flat out impossible to understand once the robots took over. But it would allow for the entire bill to be read, sort of, in a single day. And it also meant that those committee meetings that Senator Cook and the Republicans were so desperate to stop could go ahead on schedule after all. And seven hours after the reading of Bill HB 191172 began, including over four hours of the ear-splitting cacophony of robot voices, it was all finally over. Minus 2023, 1172. Jeff Bridges, no, not the Hollywood actor, the Democratic Colorado State Senator from Denver, Jeff Bridges, whooped with joy. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Once everyone had calmed down, two Republican senators took to the floor to protest the way the bills had been read. They argued Bill HB 191172 may have contained something bad in it, either by accident or by design, and that the reading was a way to provide transparency to the senators before they vote. This was a really disingenuous argument to make. HB 191172 was in fact co-sponsored by Senator Cook, the guy who requested the full reading of the bill, and Senator Bob Gardner from Colorado Springs, who actually complained that a proper reading of the bill was needed to prevent hasty and ill-considered legislation, surprise, or fraud. Just a thought, but if Senators Gardner and Cook were really concerned, then maybe they shouldn't have co-sponsored the bill in the first place. For a moment, it appeared that the Democrats had won. But that victory was not total. The Republican Senate leadership took the Democratic leadership to court, and eight days later, Denver District Judge David Goldberg ruled that the use of computer voices to read a bill was not legal, saying the court was unable to discern a single word from the tape played during the court proceeding. But the real reason for demanding the reading of Bill HB 191172 was to block the legislation that the Republican senators didn't like, and on that count, the Republicans lost. It has taken time, but the Colorado Senate recently passed legislation requiring oil and gas companies to follow lots of new rules. And on March 23, 2020, much to Senator Cook's dismay, Colorado became the 22nd U.S. state to abolish the death penalty. That is, until the robots take over again.